So tonight we're actually going to be talking about the civil rights movement in America, but the portion of tonight that we are going to be discussing is actually the rise up to or the lead up to the civil rights movement. And then we're going to give a small discussion point on the civil rights movement. So this is going to be a part of a larger teaching series. This is the portion that kind of introduces you all to it if you're not familiar with the civil rights movement, what it does, what it's all about, when it started. We're going to go over several of those tokens today. And so if you can, come on in the room, grab a friend, grab a foe, and come on and learn with me. So the objective of today is to teach you about the lead up to it and then to give you a general overview because what I want to do is offer you an opportunity at the end of this teaching to learn more with me this summer. I do want to send a special shout out to my mom who is on Hey Mama, I Love You. My mother is one of the many women and men who, well, many women who were, um, who lived through a portion of the civil rights movement. I know that many of our, our parents, our grandparents, um, if we still have great grandparents, aunts and uncles were definitely privy, um, well, exposed during that time. And they had various different experiences with uh, Jim Crow, especially if they were in the South. Uh, but definitely this is something that is a part of America's history. So a part of this objective for today is also to rage against the, um, the proposal to whitewash America's history. So we have to talk about uh, the United States. Now, we all know that the United States, what we know as this land that is the United States, obviously was, uh, we know that this land did, did not belong to the British, as a matter of fact, right? This is a First Nations people's land. And so we want to make sure that we pay homage to all First Nations peoples. Um, some people call them Native Americans. Some call them American Indians. I shy away from the top, the, the phrase American Indian, because that is a, a misnomer. Obviously, we know that the term Indian came from um, Christopher Columbus's poor directions, right? When he was supposedly trying to reach India, when he reached the island of Hispaniola and thought he was in India, then he named the people here Indians. Well, the people in the island of Hispaniola, that's where we get the term Indian from. So I never use that term. You, I call them First Nations peoples. You can call them indigenous peoples, indigenous Americans. So you can call them by their actual names, their group namings. Um, so we want to pay homage to them because we know that they indeed were here prior to any Europeans arrival. Yes. Um, however, we also then do know that the 13 colonies came under the, um, the rulership of Great Britain. Now, when the United States fought in the American Revolutionary War, and they subsequently won, the colonies won to form um, the to form United States of America, then we had some people that the United States history books uh, call founding fathers. And some of those founding fathers, obviously, you know, are George Washington, um, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, you're familiar with many of who they are because those are the ones, especially if you live in Southern states that you have to learn about, right? You didn't even know that there were other people besides some of those founding fathers. Nevertheless, um, one of the biggest names that resonates, especially if you're a Virginian, is uh, Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson was very much so impacted by the Enlightenment, and he brought a lot of the ideals of the Enlightenment of self-actualization of um, self act of yes of, of individual rights of the rights of man and citizen those concepts he brought over and he started to pen the Declaration of Independence so in as the beginning of the Declaration of Independence we see that it says we hold these truths to be self-evident and I always challenge my students uh, when we look at this portion when we say we hold these truths to be self-evident, we know that that means that there's, it's saying that we're obvious, that all men are created equal. So I want you to pay very close attention to that phrasing, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. These are irrefutable rights, rights that cannot be turned away, rights that cannot be removed, that among these are life, liberty, 
and the pursuits of happiness. Now he got that la those last three concepts from a, a, an enlightenment thinker called John Locke, actually. And Locke believed in life, liberty, and property, but Thomas Jefferson turned them into life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 